Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing really well. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you my quarter four makeup purchases. This includes all different avenues of makeup coming into my life over the months of October, November, and December. And I am really excited to share with you not only the information for just quarter four, but we are gonna be recapping the entirety of 2022. If you're not familiar, I have been keeping track of the makeup purchases that I make for all of this year. And I do have videos from each quarter as well if you're interested in checking those out. So I have some serious stats to go over in today's video as well as just some reflections on what this last year of makeup consumption and beauty consumption in general looked like for me. Before sitting down to film this video today, I actually watched back in its entirety my 2021 reflections. I had done a low buy slash no buy year for all of 2021. And so I watched back that video talking about kind of a recap of what that year looked like for me and my goals for 2022. And I want to talk through some of my goals and some of my mindset, maybe shifts or how I'm feeling now. Um, but that video was very insightful, very interesting. I highly recommend that you check it out if you haven't yet seen it. I know it's from a year ago, but I really feel like a lot of the things that I said in that video really rang true and are things that I want to continue to bring forward with me moving into 2023 and beyond as a consumer and as a makeup user. So let's talk about what quarter four looked like for me. In the month of October, I did not receive any PR, nor did I purchase any new makeup for myself. I actually just unintentionally did a complete no buy. I was very motivated to work through some of my Project Pan items. And so my November update of my Project Pan was very successful, I think in part because I was so focused on Project Panning. I really wasn't thinking about what I was going to bring into my life in that month at all. But in November, I definitely, definitely made up for lost time because I brought in a grand total of 17 products. While I did not shop the Sephora sale, I did end up bringing in six products into my collection on my own and 11 of those were through PR. So let's talk about all the products that came into my life in the month of November. The ones that I purchased for myself, I'm really, really happy with. I'm so, so pleased about all of these products. The first one being the Pacifica Vegan Collagen Fluffy Lash Mascara. This was a repurchase for me. I had purchased it previously in July. I had used it up and then I purchased this specifically for a video. I did a full face of sustainable beauty and I wanted to feature this mascara because I love that it is in a glass packaging tube. So I am happy that I have it in my life. The formula is good. It's what I'm wearing today alongside the Fluffy Lash Primer as well, the Vegan Collagen Primer, whichever it's called, but I'm wearing it in tandem with that product. And yeah, I do quite like this. It's not the be all end all of mascaras for me. It's definitely not. And that is why I ended up making a purchase actually from Mob Beauty later in the month during their Black Friday sale. So I actually purchased this volumizing mascara from Mob Beauty. As you can see, I have not opened it and put the components together. If I'm not mistaken, I believe the Black Friday sale was 20 or 25% off. I ended up paying $30 for this mascara, which is quite steep, but I was looking for another sustainable kind of option when it came to mascaras. And I thought that this was a really good alternative. So what this comes with is a capsule. Oh, it just <laughs> came apart, but a capsule that you put the mascara refill into so that you're not always bringing in substantial amounts of packaging, but you get the wand and you get the product and very minimal packaging and you can put it into this component. I hope I'm explaining that in a way that doesn't sound just like so convoluted because in my head, I just feel like I overcomplicated that. I kind of avoided purchasing this for a while because what if I don't like the formula? Perhaps I will just be stuck with extra packaging, more packaging than it's worth. But I thought to myself, I am genuinely curious to try it. I love the refillability of Ma Beauty and when it was on a little bit more of a deal, I thought I would go ahead and give it a go. However, I have not opened it because I have the other one that I'm currently working on. And you'll see, I have gotten a couple other ones in PR, so I just haven't actually delved into this, but I am mighty excited to do so eventually. I also thought that maybe one day they'll come out with a different mascara formulation that I would like to try out. So to have the capsule, to have the component available to do so in the future, I thought was just a really good idea. And when I made that purchase, 
because it was a sale time, they also had free samples. So I got two free samples in that purchase. The first one is the M36 bronzer. This is a shade down from the bronzer that I actually already have from Mob Beauty and I'm genuinely curious to see how this one looks. It's a teeny tiny pan, so I don't really think that I'll be able to use it really wholly on my face, like in a full kind of capacity but I am going to definitely try it out and just see what the tone looks like for sure and possibly just use it as an eyeshadow. And then I also got a sample of the lipstick in the shade M55, which looks like a beautiful plum shade. I think it'll be a really fun product to use and try out, especially in the winter months. These both do count as items in my makeup inventory. They count in my sample category, but either way, they are new products that came into my life I now have the responsibility for. And yes, they are small products, but they still add up in my collection. So I always consider them as something that I have acquired. Also around Black Friday, I did make a purchase from e.l.f. and it was a very small purchase. I bought this little puff, which doesn't count in my makeup kind of acquisitions component of this video, but I bought this puff and I bought a pair of tweezers. And because it was my birthday month in November, I ended up getting a free gift with purchase um, through their kind of membership kind of program. I believe it's the e.l.f. squad. So I had some points, so I ended up redeeming for a lip balm and then it was my birthday. So I got to pick out a gift from one or two different options. And I picked out this seriously satin lipstick in the shade Cherry, which is a gorgeous red shade. This is a little bit more deep than other reds that I have in my collection. So I thought it was a really nice option to kind of balance out my makeup collection. And this is something that I will use from time to time, definitely won't be using it as an everyday lipstick, but I thought it was something really fun to bring into my life. So I didn't pay for this. It was a gift with purchase, but it still counts as something that's now my responsibility. It still is something that I wanted to bring into my life and add to my collection. And lastly for purchases, I actually made this at the beginning of the month and I kind of just skipped over it, but this was the Aether Beauty eyeshadow palette. This is a Citrine Crystal Quad. Over the past few months, I had found myself pretty frequently kind of going back to the Aether website and going back to the Sephora website, the detox market, all different avenues, looking at this eyeshadow palette, but never taking the plunge to do so. And one day it was like late at night, I was kind of perusing. I was looking through all those websites, looking for Aether products because um, you will notice a theme. I am trying to purchase things that have a little bit more sustainable packaging, items that don't utilize as much plastic. And so I found myself doing that late at night one day and I ended up going into the Poshmark app to see, is it possible I could find this palette on there? And I did, and I feel like I got a really good price for it as well. I ended up paying $25.98 for this four pan, which is kind of expensive for four eyeshadows, but it was definitely a deal in comparison to buying it brand new but this was not touched, it was unswatched, so it ended up being a really great deal in my opinion, and so far I have been really enjoying it. These are beautiful, neutral, kind of everyday shadows. The two metallics at the bottom here are a little bit more sheer in comparison to other metallics from my collection, but they're definitely buildable and they're really, really approachable kind of eyeshadows, if that makes sense. Like easy to use, they don't feel intimidating. And then to round out November, I ended up getting 11 products in PR, which is quite, quite hefty. And it all came from Pacifica. I have them all here in a basket. I don't wanna talk about these too much at length, but I did get quite a generous package from them that included some skincare as well and I was not expecting it to be this volume of products, but these are things that I am really excited for and I'm very, very grateful for the opportunity to have received these. So I am wearing the primer that goes with the Pacifica Vegan Collagen Fluffy Lash Mascara. It is the Vegan Collagen Lash Serum and Primer. I am wearing this today underneath of that mascara. I did receive this from them and I really like the way that this offers more volume and more longevity to the mascara. So. This was a really good hit for me and it totally made sense. I believe that they probably had seen that I featured the mascara in my video. So they ended up sending me two other mascaras. One is just a kind of backup of the Vegan Collagen Fluffy Lash, which I'll get to use sometime in 2023. And then this one that I'm really excited for comes in the exact same packaging, the glass component 
but this is the Activist Volume and Curl Mascara, which I'm super stoked for. I'm actually really looking forward to giving that one a try, but I've been really actively trying to avoid having multiple mascaras open at a time because I simply cannot use them up in their entirety that way. They end up getting dried out before I'm able to actually use them up. So it may be some time before I get to actually using these up, but I think I think I want to work on the mob one that I purchased for myself before I even try the activist volume and curl. I think so, because that was one that I really, really was anticipating and excited to bring into my life. So I think that will be the next mascara that I work on. But let me know if you'd like to rather hear my thoughts on the activist volume and curl in advance of the mob one. Let me know your thoughts. I received two of the fluffy blushy cream blushes. That is so hard to say together, fluffy blushy. And I got the shade Bloom, which is a beautiful pinky color that has like a golden sheen to it. And then I also received the shade Sunset, which is a beautiful nude kind of peachy tone. I do have this on today, but then I ended up applying my lipstick and kind of putting it onto my cheeks for a little bit of a amp up of color, but thoroughly have been enjoying this one. Actually, in the last few days, I've worn it several times and really liked the way that it looks on my coloring and on my skin at its fairest right now. This has this beautiful like melon kind of color, kind of reminiscent of cantaloupe that I really enjoy. It looks very flattering on my skin and I find that this texture is also very flattering. It's super easy to blend out, but it does dry down to like a demi matte almost kind of texture and it does have some longevity I have found as well. It doesn't like move around. I ended up wearing this um, on a night out fairly recently and really liked it and it came home and it still had a lot of impact, which is surprising, but yeah, really like these so far actually. And I will share with you a first impressions reel. If it hasn't uh, been posted yet, I will share it very, very soon because I did actually take some footage the first time I was trying them to compare and contrast the colors and just to see how the application was. But anyways, I also received this, which I have not yet opened. This is the Dreamlit Under Eye Brightener. So I don't have any thoughts on this yet. I believe it to be just a clear kind of plumping sort of product to wear underneath the eyes, which is definitely intriguing, but I just haven't gotten into it yet. I don't know why. Probably I should try it out tomorrow. <laughs> I, should, I should try it out soon because I am really curious to see what it's all about. But yeah, I don't have any thoughts or opinions on that yet. And I also received this primer. This is the Vegan Collagen Skin Solve. This is a prime blur and hydrating primer. Thoroughly enjoying this so far. The only drawback for me is the scent. It is very fragranced, but even with my fragrance allergy, I have not found any sort of irritation or problems whatsoever, so that is good. I love that this is in a glass component as well. It's so nice to see more products coming out in glass versus in plastics because glass will eventually break down into the environment. Plastic will live here forever and always, and that's just daunting to think about, isn't it? This primer has a very soft, like illuminating kind of tone to it. It is really, really beautiful and it is hydrating. It does feel very nourishing on the skin. You can see that's what, that's the color that it is. It's like a almost like light pinky color and it's very hydrating. It goes on like a lotion, but as you work it into the skin, it almost creates this slightly tacky, slightly, slightly sticky kind of quality to it. We can feel it's kind of gripping and it is sinking into the skin while also creating like a kind of stickier top layer. And I find my base products sit incredibly well over top of this because of that. And it just makes the skin look really nice. It bounces the light in a really beautiful way. I've worn this without any sort of foundations, but I've also worn it with all my different bases that I have in my collection. And so far, so good. And finally for makeup, I have four lip products that they sent my way, two of which are these lip oils. I cannot remember the exact name. They are the Glow Stick Lip Oils, and I have the shades Crimson Crush and Pale Sunset. These offer a very slight tint to the lips. They are a little bit hydrating, not overly hydrating, not overly slippy, but very comfortable, and they deposit just a tiny bit of color. This one called Pale Sunset actually seems to leave a little bit of a tint behind, which I don't mind, but as you can see, it's very, very sheer. Like, can you even see that? It's got like a slightly pinky 
kind of quality to it there. Mostly it just bounces back the light to make your lips look very plump and hydrated. And then this one in Crimson Crush is significantly more pigmented, although I would say not very pigmented at all. It is very sheer as well, but these are really beautiful, really easy to throw on with or without other makeup on. And I like that about them. Same with these, these are the uh, lip balms, but they're both tinted versions. So I have the Vegan Collagen Complex Lip Balm. It doesn't have a color name, but then this one is the Dream Youth. And this one I have not yet tried. Let's give it a shot. I think this has more of like a yeah fuchsia kind of tint to it. So there is a swatch right there of the Dreamy Youth Complex Lip Balm. I'm gonna use these as lip glosses even though they're technically labeled as lip balms and that's because they do have this pigmentation to them. That one smells really nice too. That smells really good. And then this one is the Vegan Collagen. This one is a little bit more sheer. I am wearing it today on top of my lipstick and I feel like it's very comfortable and it does look really nice, but it doesn't feel overly heavy and it's not sticky at all. That is the vegan collagen one. It's like a soft pinky kind of tone. So that is everything that I brought into my life in the month of November. Yes, quite substantial, quite substantial amount of products. And then in the month of December, I only brought in one product and I don't yet have it with me because I purchased it only two days ago. Today is the 31st when I'm filming this video. So I purchased it on the 29th and I don't yet have it, but I wanted to talk about it because I did purchase it in 2022. So it is a brand new product on the market. It's the Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue Brightening Concealer. And I have obviously no thoughts or opinions on it yet. However, I am incredibly excited to get it in my hands because we all know I love the Complexion Rescue from Bare Minerals. So when I saw that that was coming out, I immediately had to purchase it. So obviously I don't have any sort of impression on the product itself, but I had to pick it up because I love the Complexion Rescue, like the tinted moisturizer. And when I saw that this was coming out, it just made me so incredibly excited. I don't have very many concealers in my life at the moment and I'm not trying to justify it in that capacity, but this is just something I really truly feel like I am going to enjoy and I'm really hoping for the best. So as soon as that comes in, I'm gonna put it to the test and I can't not wait. And collectively this quarter, I spent $114.97 on makeup products. So I ended up bringing in a collective of 18 products, some of which were gift with purchase and sample sizes. Others were PR and others were things that I purchased on my own. But yeah, that was definitely my most substantial quarter of this year. I'll also share with you on the screen all of the non-makeup products that I ended up bringing into my life throughout this quarter as well. We're definitely not gonna be sitting here talking about all of those products. That's not something that I've been doing in this series, but for my own sake, I did want to track things this year. It was one of my goals was to track all my beauty categories um, in general. So let's kind of just talk about the entirety of this year. Now that we've kind of recapped what the last quarter looked like, let's talk about 2022. So I had four overarching goals that I talked about in my introduction video at the very beginning of this year. The first one was I didn't wanna receive PR for quarter one of 2022. I did end up breaking that and I brought in two lipsticks from Merit near the end of quarter one, but I never really came back and reevaluated that other than just saying I wanted to be selective with PR moving forward. So that was something that I kind of let fell, fall off a little bit. I would say, generally speaking, I did do better with PR this year than I have in years past, but I really wish that I had maintained that a little bit more, especially looking back. I was in, I was feeling so confident that it was something that I could obtain and continue to move forward with, but I didn't end up finding myself actually being able to maintain that. So yeah, that is something that I'm a little upset that I wasn't able to have a little bit more willpower about, but regardless, it is what it is. We'll talk about how much PR I received in a moment. Um, and then uh, one of my other goals was quarterly check-ins. I've actually been able to maintain this, which is great. I'm so happy that I've been able to sit down and share with you every single quarter what came into my life and kind of a brief overview of my thoughts. But I think in the coming year, I wanna talk less about the products and more about my mindset, <laughs> I suppose 
because these videos are not really about product reviews. I think making it less focused on products could be really beneficial so we can have real conversations about me as a consumer and how, how I'm feeling, I guess. And then the third goal that I had was to add fewer items than empties total to my life. And if you saw my makeup inventory, which I'll have linked, I was not able to attain this. I was very, very close. So the items that I add are inclusive of purchases, gifts, samples, and PR. And I brought in a grand total of 49 products this year and I used up 45. So they were very close, nearly on par with one another, but I did end up bringing in more products than I was able to use up. This was a huge improvement from last year, however. Last year I had brought in 66 items and I had only used 40. So I do feel like I'm getting better. I'm most definitely getting better and that feels good. My final goal of the year was to track all of my purchases for all beauty categories, which I have been doing very diligently and every quarter I have shared them with you, what I brought into my life. And I wanted to talk about how much money I spent on non-makeup beauty products this year because that's not something that we've really discussed through these updates. I spent a grand total that was much higher than I think I had been anticipating, and that was $1,212.56. So I'm Canadian, these metrics are all in Canadian, but that was kind of an eye opener for me. That means that I was spending about $100 a month on new makeup products. That's not the grand like dollar value of everything, that's just how much I spent because a lot of these products I did receive in PR, but a lot of these things are also absolute necessities like bar soap, shampoo, face wash. These are things that I need to have in the rotation. And then some other things were a little bit more frivolous, I suppose. Altogether, I have been tracking every single thing very diligently and I'm really happy that I did that. So let's talk about the 2022 totals for makeup now. So as I said, I did bring in a grand total of 49 items. I used up a grand total of 45 products. So pretty close to comparable in terms of counts, but I did not quite reach that goal that I had set myself. But if you look at the breakdown, it is actually quite interesting. Of those 49, eight of them were gift with purchases or samples. So some of them are deluxe size minis. Like I have this Kosas, this is a brow gel from Kosas right here that I've been using for a while. This was technically a gift with purchase. I didn't pay anything for it, but I'm still responsible for the product. So I still considered that. But then some of the other samples were like, I have three blister packs of the Fenty Beauty lipsticks. So really those are not massive products, but they each individually count in my makeup inventory as samples. So eight products altogether were samples. 26 collective products were PR. That is a lot of products that I did end up taking into my life in PR. So half, half of what I brought in was through PR. I brought in 49, PR was 26 of those items. I recluttered one item and yes, this does count because it made its way back into my makeup inventory. It was a ColourPop Super Shock Shadow that I found in my makeup empties from years past that still had product in it, still was a beautiful color and I decided to bring it back into my collection. So it was neither purchased, like I didn't spend any money, I didn't get it as a gift or anything like that, but I did wanna count it as making its way back into my makeup inventory. So this year, the grand total number of makeup products that I purchased for myself was only 14 items. Only 14 for an entire calendar year. So I spent a grand total of $268.28 on those 14 items. And I am really proud of myself for only purchasing 14 items. I am so incredibly proud to see that number. Yes, it was a lot of makeup as a collective, everything that came in, but I do think that it shows some really good growth in me that I only bought 14 items. 
Last year during my low slash no buy kind of situation, I purchased only six products. And so allowing myself this year to kind of go without necessarily rules, but some overarching goals, I didn't really know how things were gonna play out. I obviously felt that I had a big shift in my mentality. I really didn't want to see my makeup collection grow exponentially. I wanted to keep things in check. And I have been relatively diligent about tracking what is coming in and what is going out, but I never restrained myself. I really didn't at all, but I only purchased 14 things because those were things that genuinely caught my eye, were things that I was really, really interested in. I just went through my kind of tracker and seven of those 14 items were just mascaras. So I only purchased seven non-mascara products for myself and then the rest was mascara, which is the category that I go through the most often. So it makes sense that I was wanting to purchase that most frequently this year. It is something that I enjoy trying new formulations of and because you can only really keep them open for like that three to four month period, I did not necessarily justify, but I, I knew it made sense to bring them in more frequently. So half of the products that I bought were one category alone, just mascara, and the rest were all different types of categories, but things that I have really enjoyed throughout this year. For my no buy categories, I just wanna to touch on this as well because I do think it's important to reflect on this as well when I look at what 2022 had in, in terms of my purchases. So I did set myself five or six, six categories that I didn't wanna purchase in 2022. At the very early parts of 2022, I discussed these. And for the most part, I do feel like I was very successful with these and I was keeping myself relatively in check with all of these categories as well, which is great. While I didn't wanna place major restrictions on myself in 2022, I did feel it was important to keep an eye on specifically these categories. And I really didn't wanna see these categories grow anyways. So having a set list of things that I wanted to avoid was truly, truly beneficial for me. And this is something I want to do moving forward as well. So the first category was glowy primers. I didn't end up bringing any glowy primers into my collection, except I guess you could consider that Pacifica primer to be sort of in that category. However, that wasn't the type of product that I was looking at or thinking of when I put this on the list. I was really talking about like those highlighting, illuminating kind of primers because I can use cream and liquid highlighters to give me the same sort of effect, that luminosity, that lit from within kind of look. And so I was doing that with my cream and liquid highlighters in my collection, in addition to actually using those glowy luminous primers for my collection. So that was a category that I saw huge success in. The complexion products category is some something that was very challenging for me. This included tinted moisturizers and foundations. I didn't end up purchasing anything in either of these categories, which is fabulous. I did purchase one product that is a complexion pencil, however, that can be used for both concealer and all over the face, but I have mostly used it as a concealer. And the cheekbone beauty product that I brought in was kind of towing the line, you know, possibly could be considered to be a base product, but I consider myself successful in this category because I didn't actually bring in any tinted moisturizers or foundations as much as I was very tempted throughout this year to do so. I really wanted to work through the co existing collection that I have and I was able to work my way through just two base products. That's really all I can use up generally in a year is just like two. So why bring in more if I can't work through what I already have? So I do feel like I was quite successful in that. Powder highlighter, I was very successful in avoiding these because I have just far too many. That is the just really overarching reason why I wanted to avoid powder highlighter. And so that is what I have done. I have not brought any into my life, which feels good. I have hardly worked my way through them, but I did use up a few, so that is great. For brow products, this was all types of brow products. I didn't wanna buy anything in this category. And as I showed you, I do have that little Kosa's um, deluxe size sample of the clear brow gel that I ended up getting. So I did technically not successfully achieve that goal of not bringing in any brow products. However, however, it was just one tiny one 
and it is something that I am using very frequently. But yeah, I didn't really need to bring it into my life and I did unfortunately break that no buy category for that. Yes, I didn't buy it, it was free, but I still brought up my brow category buy one because of that product, so it counts. Lip liners, I did not bring any lip liners into my life this year, which is amazing. I'm so, so happy about that. I did not purchase any, I didn't get any in PR. And I actually brought that category down quite substantially through decluttering and through empties, which is fabulous. Would love to continue to make some progress on that category in the coming years as well. And lastly, we got cream blush. While I didn't purchase any this year, I have brought in quite a few cream blushes through PR and one as a gift with purchase. The ones that I received in PR, I did not see any of them coming into my life in advance of them just being a part of my collection. So those two Pacifica ones that I got this quarter, I didn't really anticipate them. I knew I was getting some semblance of PR from Pacifica, but I didn't really know what was coming into my life. So I didn't plan for those, but I'm happy to have them. I'm actually really enjoying testing them out. So I'm not upset about it. I also did receive one cream blush from Ma Beauty. Again, it just kind of came one day. It wasn't something that I had planned for. It's all okay with me. I will get use out of it. And I have been using it actually kind of regularly lately. It's really, really pretty. And then one thing that I did bring in on my own was again, a gift with purchase through a Sephora order. I ended up getting a mini size of the Rare Beauty blush. So my bl cream blush collection actually went up by four this year. I did add four new products rather into that category. So that was not a successful no buy category for me, but I do feel like having set that as the tone that I wasn't gonna bring any into my life, I really did avoid purchasing excessively in this category because it is one that I find a lot of fun and a lot of joy out of purchasing new things within but I knew deep down I didn't need anything more and through the three that I have gotten in PR, I do have a lot more variety in my collection and so yeah, I'm happy I didn't decide to purchase any on my own minus that little deluxe size one, but I am happy with the four that have come into my life. So this was a doozy. That is everything for 2022 makeup purchasing. 2023 goals and intentions will be coming soon but this is a hefty enough video that we wouldn't have had any time or space to talk about that anyways. I hope that you enjoyed hearing kind of a recap on what 2022 looked like for me and the entirety of this last quarter as well. Overall, I feel like this was a really good practice for me this year because things don't just get pushed by the wayside and forgotten about. Things don't just amalgamate into my collection and never get looked at again sitting down and sharing them with you keeps me accountable as well for these things now being a part of my life, being my responsibility in terms of their packaging, their product. And I do think that this has been a really good practice for me. It is something that I want to continue doing moving forward, but potentially in a different sort of capacity. I'm not sure. We'll see. I have some thinking to do for sure, and I'm sure that some of you may have some ideas and suggestions, so please leave those down in the comments. I would love, love, love to hear what you think I should do for 2023 panning, 2023 low buy, 2023 kind of quarterly updates. What do you wanna see on this channel? What things did you enjoy about this series or maybe not enjoy? But yeah, that is everything for today's long, long video. That is everything. Thank you so, so much for watching and for hanging out with me. I really do appreciate it. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye everyone.